I am Johnny Massacre and welcome to the Johnny Massacre Show. This is the Friday Morning Massacre. On this morning's show, YouTube to remove dislike button permanently. In other news, eight fans die and many more injured at a Travis Scott concert. And people blame it on the devil. Who's fucking with me? Give me a hell yeah! So YouTube are getting rid of the dislike button. I wonder why they are doing this. I certainly have my opinion on it. <coughs> Everyone hates Biden and they want to hide it. But why don't you go over to ngadget.com and we will read it together. They say some crazy wild shit. They say... YouTube will hide dislike counts for all videos. The move could reduce harassment and targeted attacks. YouTube's experiment with hiding dislikes was apparently successful. The service is rolling out a change that will make dislike counts private for videos across YouTube. The button will still exist and affect your recommendations. And producers can still see the count. You just won't see the numbers as a viewer. The Google-owned brand is aware that some people used the counts to make viewing decisions, but felt secret counts would help the community at large. New and smaller creators are more often targeted by dislike campaigns, YouTube said, and the test reduced that harassment. The move will theoretically create an inclusive and respectful space where video makers both have a better chance to succeed and feel safe. So anytime a leftist talks about safety, it usually means their tyrannical wishes to censor anyone they don't like. When they talk about a safe space, it's just a pussy space because these bitches are too coddled and safe in modern free society. They never had to endure the horrors of our ancestors that died to give them the freedom that they're now shitting on and they just want to censor you in their safe space. So all of these words are very, very disturbing for me. But, but, but there is something to this. So I sometimes talk to people who are starting YouTube and they find it difficult to get viewers. And especially when they start out, people will vandalize their pages. So they make a video and they can see there's only a couple of hundred views and maybe one or two thumbs up. So they'll immediately thumb it down. And it's, it's like when you're drunk after a night out and you haven't got laid. So you just vandalize the bus stop and you smash the glass or you write some shit. People just will click thumbs down. It doesn't require a lot of effort to be mean to someone and make yourself feel better. So that is a problem. I do understand that. However, there should be, there's already a mode to turn this off. You can turn off the likes and dislikes. So if you can already do that, why are they just now completely removing the ability to dislike? Let me tell you why. It's because of Biden. Biden is supposed to be the most popular president of all time, but he couldn't even fill a small gymnasium of fans and supporters during his presidential bid. Biden was down in all swing states. Trump was smashing it. The Young Turks were melting down on their YouTube channel. And then magically, all the states Biden needed to win in which he was getting smashed in stopped counting. And then they just kept counting secretly in the middle of the night. And then when the counts were about right, they announced the results of that and magically Biden had won, but his popularity remains extremely small for someone who's more popular than Obama. He got like 20 million more votes than Obama and the left always wank over him. He got 10 million more than Donald Trump apparently. And yet, if you go over to any of Biden's videos on the White House, they have insane amounts of thumbs down. Have a look at this. I went on this just now. This is the latest video. President Biden on supply chains and holidays. 5,600 thumbs down, 518 thumbs up. Look at the next video. This just came out. Biden participates at the National Veterans Day observance. 4,400 thumbs down, 238 thumbs up. Now, the White House now are controlled by Biden. They're similar to China and North Korea in their desires to have a totalitarian state with only one mode of thought. And so they don't want to show the thumbs up and thumbs down and they want to remove the thumbs up, thumbs down. But even they know that America is built on freedom and that wouldn't look very good if they did that. So rather than the White House remove likes and dislikes because then people will think it looks suspicious, they've just nudged their shadow government YouTube and big tech to just remove the dislike function totally. Otherwise, people are going to realize what Time magazine already said in that publication where they said that the election was fortified. So that is why obviously YouTube are removing dislikes because you can see how many dislikes Biden gets. And the narrative is from big tech and the mainstream media that he's the most popular president of all time. And yet the actual figures of his popularity cut against that. So they have to hide it. So that's what's going on. Crazy shit, really. And I find it amazing how leftists, they always use the system to become really big, the American free system, 
the marketplace of ideas and then once they become big they destroy the very system and close the door on the entrance that they used in order to become successful so you see this with this election they want to pack the courts that you know they want to pack the supreme court the supreme court is not supposed to have your political cronies in it it's just supposed to have some honest people they want to pack the Supreme Court so they can get their way every single time. They want to keep mailing ballots. They want to remove free speech. They use all of these things to get into power and now they want to get rid of it. And this is the same thing with YouTube. The reason YouTube was so big is the reason why America was, is so big, which is because it's pure capitalism, free markets. You can say what you want. You can pretty much do what you want. And if people don't like it, they're going to say you're fucking garbage. And that makes people ultra competitive. It makes people motivated to succeed. When you, when you fuck around with the system and you start censoring stuff and it's not a free marketplace of ideas anymore and you can't see what people really like and what people don't like, then you're just destroying the system that's going to make you popular and successful. So leftists trying to destroy America and leftists who own YouTube basically destroying the platform that's served them so well. So this is only going to hurt YouTube. People want to see who's the best of the best. It's also like in sport. You don't want to see handicap or censorship in sport. So everyone wins. You want to see people live and die on that pitch. That's what's entertaining. And in the same way, people want to see YouTubers um, have massive success and massive failure. And it's that gladiatorial pit where we all are against each other and it's very entertaining and the people who emerge on top are victorious and they're epic and become legends and that's not going to happen anymore all of that entertainment is going to be gone from youtube just because they want to protect biden if you're just joining us i am johnny masca and we're discussing youtube removing the dislikes button to protect biden in my opinion but if you've been watching from the beginning stop your grinning and drop your linen donate some cash and Let's keep winning. Streamlabs.com forward slash Johnny Masco. The more you donate, the more you're going to get. I'm a bit late with this video because the less cash that comes in, the less motiv motivated I am to make videos. To be honest, I'm thinking about quitting just doing this all together with politics because, yeah, I'm, go I'm moving so far away from my purpose, which is making music. This is just ridiculous. But if you donate nicely, then I might still keep making these videos. Otherwise, I'm just going to start posting videos of me in the studio doing music production and tank my subscriber base so moving on moving on travis scott uh, that quote rapper unquote probably the worst rapper i've ever heard in my life he did a concert and eight people died and hundreds of people were injured so this is some wild crazy shit now first of all travis scott if you don't know made this fucking awful tune so he made that he's really popular i i watched the interview with him on david letterman and he actually comes across as retarded he kind of sitting there with a goofy smile but fair play to him he's got balls he goes out there and he performs on the stage so i can't knock him too much but he's not very talented all the same he's good at making money though and he does show up when it's time to perform anyways he's he's in a lot of trouble so he had this massive concert um it's called astro world and loads of people were crushed to death in the crowd so let's have a look at the news npr.org says at least eight people have died and 300 were injured due to crowd surges this weekend at a houston based music festival called astro world it's estimated that 50,000 people attended it was you might want to see my screen 50,000 motherfuckers attended this, right? The Coronas. The Coronas is b -b 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 bad, mama. So we're all going to go out and have a good time because we've been at home for fucking ages and then we're going to die. They say that it was the third annual festival run and headlined by rapper Travis Scott. Scott released a video in response to the tragedy saying he plans to cover the funeral costs of those who died. Hello. Hello. Um, I've killed your son. I'm going to pay for his funeral. Cheers. Bye. I don't think that's really going to cover it, mate. They say, and I saw this video. He did, he, he kind of made this apology and it looks a little bit fake. And I'm, I'm going to 
elaborate on this in a minute. The article says it's not the first time the artist, sometimes sometimes called hip hop's king of rage, has come under fire for fan casualties at his concerts. In 2017, a man named Kyle Green was paralyzed after he jumped off a balcony at a Travis Scott show. Well, that's not Travis's fault, let's be honest. His lawyer spoke to Rolling Stone and said Kyle is even more incensed by the fact it could have been avoided had Travis learned his lesson in the past so let's go through this news because this is some crazy shit so bbc say travis scott should have stopped concert earlier says fire chief so these people died they were crushed and now the question is how much of it is travis scott's fault and could he have done something to stop it they say a student who attended the astroworld concert in texas at which eight people died has now been declared brain dead Eight people aged between 14 and 27 were killed in a crush during the show last weekend and hundreds more were injured, including a nine-year-old boy who's in a medically induced coma. And now doctors say a 22-year-old woman has been in hospital since the concert is showing no signs of brain activity. The news comes after a Houston fire chief claimed rapper Travis Scott should have halted the show more quickly. Samuel Pena told NBC everybody at that event had a responsibility from the artist on down. The artist said he's devastated, yada, yada, yada. So, so you've got young children with life-altering trauma who are brain dead, various people who are brain dead. Now, I was thinking about this. How much of this is his fault? This guy is right at the center of all this shit. It's him and his production company. He picks his production company. He picks his management. And so they collaborate together. Now, Travis Scott can whip the crowd up into a frenzy. He can command them to do whatever he wants because they obviously look up to him a lot. And you see various people at festivals, they try to organize the crowd. They split them into two and they get people to charge each other and they encourage people to mosh and stuff like that. And they can stop the concert. He can stop it at any time and say, this has to stop right now. So he has a lot of power. And so in my opinion, he's very much responsible for a lot of the things that went on here, especially in light of the fact that he has previous at concerts where he apparently encouraged people to get a little bit rowdy. Let's have a look at some more articles. Now we're going to start to see how dirty Travis Scott really is. So news.com.au says Travis Scott bragged about hurt unconscious fans before tragedy. Disturbing posts from Travis Scott's Instagram which praised fans who were injured at his shows are recirculating in the wake of the deadly Astroworld tragedy. Eight years before eight died at his Astro World Festival, that's one year per life, Travis Scott would brag on social media about fans getting hurt and passing out at his shows, even suggesting one would be a hero if he didn't survive a New York gig. The NY Post reports that the 30-year-old sicko mode star under fire for playing on at playing on at Friday's Houston Festival as eight died and hundreds were injured, still has disturbing images on his social media celebrating previous scares. One of the most disturbing posts shows a young man seemingly unconscious at Scott's sold-out 2015 show at Manhattan's Webster Hall. Quote, To the kid that didn't survive the rodeo, you're a hero in moo book, Scott captioned the photo that is still on his page. The image was posted the day after his show with Young Thug at the East Village venue. Just before it, he posted a video of the crowd reacting to him playing his song. So this is a guy on the floor who's nearly dead, and he's praising him, saying, if you, if you, if he, if you die, you're a hero. And then he said, before a kid pass out, he wrote, seemingly celebrating the same fan. He also posted another image of someone seemingly out cold at a 2014 show with the simple caption, what the fuck? Among photos of his girlfriend, Kylie Jenner, and their daughter, Stormy, Scott also posted other images glorifying fans' injuries, noted TMZ, which compiled many of the posts. So you've got a post here of a guy fucked on the floor, nearly looks like he's nearly dead. And the rapper Travis Scott captioned the photo, last day of tour was tonight very wild. To that kid who blackout, you're a hero. So for someone who's very trade is using lyrics and words, I'm amazed at the level of illiteracy of this man, but still he is praising and encouraging people to get hurt at his shows. He also said, she broke her hand and she doesn't give a fuck, he wrote in one. While another bragged, it's not a show until someone pass out. So he's saying, 
he's encouraging people to go wild and knock each other out until they're unconscious. One image shows a smiling young man with blood pouring from his right eye with Scott writing, I love you. So this guy sounds like he's been abused by his family or something. All he knows is abuse. It's obviously normalized to him. And now he's encouraging other people to abuse each other. It's actually quite disturbing. And there's loads of things like this. It's, it's all over his social media. So he came out before, just after this, this went down, and he said, oh, I'm so sorry and shit. But we look into his past, and he's been encouraging it. And not only that, the question is, was he aware of what was going on during the concert? Well, I, I've done a bit of research, and he obviously was. There's an ambulance coming. He, see, he sees what's going on, and he was encouraging people to keep going. Let's keep looking at the news because this story gets deeper. Yahoo News says man paralyzed at 2017 Travis Scott concert, extremely upset over Astro World tragedy. Elaborate, elaborating on something earlier, we read. They say Kyle Green in 2017 attended the Travis Scott concert. He was pushed from a third floor balcony during the show. So the other article said he jumped. This one said he pushed. So you can see there's a lot of PR spin by Travis Scott's production team, probably sending out press releases saying the man jumped when actually he might have been pushed. So the one pattern you're seeing here is there's a lot of violence and injuries at Travis Scott's shows. And as you've just seen, Travis Scott encourages the violence. He says, if there's no violence, it's not a show. This is the guy who was paralyzed at a Travis Scott concert four years previously. Let us keep going through this news. So now you're going to see Travis Scott, Travis Scott's real personality reveal itself. Over on HelloGiggles.com, Travis Scott just pleaded guilty to a crime and it's not what you think. This was in 2018. They say, they say... On Tuesday, February the 6th of 2018, Travis Scott pleaded guilty to inciting a riot at one of his concerts in 2017. Here's what happened and what happened next. In May of 2017, Scott was arrested for stirring up trouble at the Walmart Music Pavilion in Arkansas. During the concert, Webster encouraged people to rush the stage and bypass security protocols to ensure concert goer safety during the rush to the stage several people were injured including an employee from the security company hired to help monitor and control the crowd and a member of the police department as a result travis scott was charged with inciting a riot disorderly conduct and endangering the welfare of a minor and he travis scott pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct so there you go so he's already been busted for causing injuries and inciting a riot at one of his concerts. And I get it. You kind of want a riot. You want people to go crazy as a performer. It is cool. But nobody wants anyone to die. And the question is, again, how much did Travis Scott know about what was going on? And should he have stopped the concert earlier? Well, I bet he wishes he had stopped the concert earlier because he is now getting sued by various people who went there would you like to see what is going on well i will show you on nbc news they say first lawsuits filed against travis scott astro world organizers after deadly festival eight people were killed and more than 300 treated they say more than a dozen lawsuits against Travis Scott and the organizers of Astroworld have been filed as of Monday after eight people died and dozens were injured following a crowd surge. So Manuel Souza suffered serious bodily injuries when the uncontrolled crowd at the concert knocked him to the ground and trampled him. So now there is many lawsuits coming his way and these are going to be multi-million dollar lawsuits including the parents of a nine-year-old who's in a medically induced coma after he was trampled at the event so travis scott is in a lot of trouble here you can see another headline on the insider saying father of nine-year-old on life support after astro while trampling sues travis scott and the organizers so the father of the nine-year-old has filed a one million dollar lawsuit and i think that is a little bit cheap don't sell yourself short this guy is 
in my opinion, partly responsible for your nine-year-old being in a coma and possibly being brain damaged for life. Now, if you look at videos of Travis Scott in the event, it looks like he knows what's going on. But what did he do as after the event? He went to a party and he was partying it up with Drake. Now, Drake also came out during the event and they were rapping together while people were getting crushed to death. Then they went off and celebrated. So Insider says Travis Scott was said to be partying at Dave & Buster's after the Astro World crowd crush, crowd rush when he found out people died. So this looks like a press release from his team saying that he had no idea they died and he only found out when he was partying. When it sounds to me like he basically, he probably... He must have known these people getting crushed because there was ambulances and shit and they had to stop the concert several times and people fucking know it's all over social media this guy's obviously an instagram whore he's always on there so he knows what's going on and then he it seems like he went out and partied and he didn't want to look like a bad guy because he was partying when people had been killed and nine-year-olds are in medically induced comas so he got his team to put out a press release saying he only found out at the party i refuse to believe it the article says travis scott was said to be at an after party when he heard people died at astro world one source told the outlet the rapper left immediately after he was told about what had happened yeah right he was there trying to find some hoes doing some drugs and shit and he didn't want to look bad so he put out this press release saying he left immediately i think he already knew people had died when he went there and the article says tmz reported that the party was hosted by drake who also was said to be unaware of the deaths drake didn't know anything so they don't want to get done here for um what's the word is it libel is it libel i think it is libel when you write something that's untrue so tmz were being really careful not to implicate drake but it looks like Drake was also holding this party after performing there and potentially both of them didn't give a shit about all these people who were killed in the crush. Uh, you want to see some footage of this concert. Let's actually see what happened. So you're wondering how much did Travis Scott really know about what went on? You're about to find out. So let's look at what the concert looks like. And it looks fucking crazy. Travis Scott singing to the body being dragged off. So look, he's looking directly at the body being dragged off the dance floor. And as he's looking at the body, he's, he's singing with his horrific auto-tune, which went out of style at least 10 years ago. I kid you not. Have a look. Singing, looking at this body unconscious fan so he knew what was going on during it and he went and partied while this shit was going on like after all these people had died and look and he was grinning and nodding he was grinning and nodding when the unconscious fan who might actually be dead see that big smile so he's proud of the fact someone was injured and we know that because already he's boasted four years ago about fans getting injured at his events and he's encouraging them to get injured. And if they don't, well, it's not a show, according to Travis Scott. So this really puts Travis Scott in a bad light. There's gonna be so much footage of this, he's in big trouble in the courtroom. So this is a girl screaming to the cameraman that someone is dead in there and the cameraman won't stop the show. They're screaming that someone's dead and no one, like they could have stopped the show immediately, but they wanted to make their money. They didn't give a fuck about these people. This is a disgrace. All these crowds start uh, chanting, stop the show, stop the show, stop the show. And you're telling me Travis Scott didn't know there were problems until someone told him at the after party. Astro World music. This fucked guy on a stretcher coming out the concert. It was very horrific this year. Uh, looks like they're administering CPR. About 50,000 people attended the event, but it didn't go down very well. At about 9 p.m., so started to happen. you've got a guy on a stretcher here. Um, looks Poor incapacitated. Could, could well be dead. There's a ton of footage like this. Oh, look, Travis Scott is right next to this guy who's basically dead. So this guy dead on the floor. And he's right up there. There's all these cops. Concert still goes on. 
He doesn't give a shit. He's still making his money. This this is a damning, damning footage of the Travis Scott concert. We actually seen one of the videos when a body is being taken out and he's still singing to it. Over 300 people were injured. But despite of all of this, Travis sang all his songs until 10, 10 p.m. So in spite of all these people getting crushed to death, he just continued to sing. Now, th there is more footage and it gets crazier still. So let's look at the next footage. Here we go. Horrific crowd footage. You know you want to see it. You know you want to see it. They're all chanting, stop the show. Travis Scott is within earshot. There's people right next to Travis Scott saying that man died like five songs ago on the ground and he's still performing and more people will die. He could have stopped the show right there at this point. They, he obviously knew what was going on and the production team knew what was going on. People were talking to the cameraman saying, stop the show. The word would it should have gotten out and they should have pulled the whole fucking thing. To people saying the crowd didn't help anybody. What's this then? So this is nice footage of the crowd helping the fellow man. So this guy's so fucked, he can't even stand. If they let go of him, he'll just fall down. So he's probably badly con concussed and all, the, friend, all the, the crowd are calling him homie and like trying to help him. So that's nice. Then we've got this. Just crazy carnage, someone screaming, that's my fucking brother all these people on the floor. Then look at this footage. We've got some demonic footage of Travis Scott laughing and grinning. The video says at this point, people were already begging for help and Travis Scott could see what was happening. Now look at the grin on Travis Scott's face. Look at the evil grin. Look, look at that. Look at that grin. Look at that. He absolutely loves it. Absolutely loves it, like he said in his post four years ago. Look at the guy. Look, he's nodding his head. He loves it. This is some nihilistic shit, honest to God. So here's the grin where apparently he knew what was going on, according to this TikToker. And he's nodding his head, thinking, yeah, man, people getting killed and crumpled at my event. This is wild. I am the man. Creepy as fuck, right? So that was going on. And there's one more video I think I want to show you. One or two, if I may. So this is someone getting pulled out. Look how crazy this crush is. Unreal crush, you're going to see now. So just just a mass of people. And this woman is just completely... Um, but like You can see she could barely breathe. She's getting people were being crowd surfed to safety and so on 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 so there you can actually see some of the footage at this astro world event this was tra with travis scott and this is a video showing how packed everything was entrance let's flick it on yeah look how packed this is This woman wants to get out. Look, no one can move. Look, people are shaking their heads. It's so rammed. Look at this crush. And then Travis Scott in the background saying, all the real ragers, you know what time it is when it's already super, super rammed. 
We've got a video saying it wasn't all crushed, but I'm sorry it was. I've looked at all the videos. This video says Travis Scott stops music at Astro World, mentions an ambulance saying whoa, but then continues the show after this, then brings Drake out. So impl implicating Drake in this, that they both knew what was going on. And then the crowd gets more, even more intense with unconscious bodies being crowd surfed out while people are still raging on them. Rest in peace. <laughs> So there you go. That's enough footage from the event. And what can I say about it? It's kind of mind-blowing stuff. And for me, I'm not surprised this shit happened because these big festivals, they're just the death of music. I'm sorry, but once something gets that popular, it's just not cool anymore. Unless you are super ultra genius of Michael Jackson or notorious B.I.G. proportions, which most of these performers aren't, if not all of them. And so at this point, when events get this large, they've just jumped the shark. They're mainstream. It's not cool anymore. It's about how many people can we cram? How many zombies can we cram into this pit? And how much of their money can we take? It's not about the passion anymore. And then you just end up with shit like this. Greed takes over. It's, it's a real manifestation of the dishonesty of these types of events. Not about passion at all. It's just about money. And therefore, you can see the amount of people crammed in there and they get what they deserve these these promoters hopefully jail time and massive massive fines i went to one of these huge festivals called ultra one of the lamest things i've ever been to it's like a big catwalk people just go there to kind of show off their clothes and their image and stuff they're not really there for the music and they don't know any of the songs they don't care about the music and i went to the front of, of the, one of the main events and it was fucking rammed and i thought at that time this is dangerous as fuck that could easily have happened at that event and i'm surprised these things don't happen more often and this hasn't happened sooner and it was inevitable in my opinion that many fucking people you ram them in how the fuck do they know how to crowd control that many people when the security guards are outnumbered by a ratio of like a thousand to one or more? So it was inevitable and these people should be punished for a very long time. The main question is how responsible is Travis Scott for this event? Do you think it's his production team? Do you think it's the concert organizers? Do you think it's Travis Scott or do you think it's a combination of all of them? As usual, your opinions are appreciated in the comment section below. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm absolutely knackered. It is 1.30 p.m. and I'm going to force myself to stay awake until about 9 and then I'm going to go to bed. So I'm going to bounce. I have been Johnny Massacre and I'll tell you what, mate, you better be back for the next episode. Otherwise, I'll be coming around your house. Please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because that is what all those other cunts tell you to do. Laters.